welcome to the third pass of instructional cassette. I'm delighted to see your dedication to the knitting machine lessons. If you are ready for today's video, relax, immerse yourself in it and be sure to share it with your friends. With this cassette, we want to help you improve your knowledge of your knitter and at the same time automate your knitting skills. Therefore, we suggest we knit together another test piece. It is a sweater for a 1 to 2 year old. This particular sweater will have a 2 by 2 rib welt and a v-neck. Illustration 1. The wool used for this sweater should be slightly thicker than the one used for your first sweater. A yarn with 330 meters length per 100 grams or 103 yards per 1 ounce would be just fine. Let's get the knitter ready. First of all, you have to wind the yarn if it is not already on a cone. Secondly, you will have to thread the yarn. If you cannot remember how it is done, you can always look it up in your instruction book. Make sure to thread the yarn correctly and compare it with the illustration in your instruction book. Illustration 2. This time, we'll start with a 2x2 two two rib. A 2x2 two two rib looks more sporty and is more elastic than a 1x1 one one rib. It is often used when followed by a textured pattern, giving a nice combination. After the rib, we will knit stocking stitch with 80 stitches. This means that we cast on over a width of 80 needles. The expression over a width of so many needles is used when not all needles are in the working position. It applies to the front bed needles only. For this 2x2 two two rib over a width of 80 needles, you proceed as follows. On the front bed, push 80 needles into the working position with the help of the needle scale. There will be 40 needles to the right of the center and 40 needles to the left of the center. Illustration 3. Push the corresponding empty needles on the back bed into the working position. Illustration 4. Do you remember the needle rule? The last needle at the right is on the back bed, and the last needle at the left is on the front bed. If necessary, turn the racking handle until the needles are in the desired position. When finished, the racking handle must be in the down position. Illustration 5. On the front bed, push every third needle down until the needle feet touch the needle scale. Begin with the first needle at the right. On the back bed, push every third needle into the rest position, also starting with the first needle at the right. Illustration 6. Compare with the needle diagram. Do the needles on the front and back bed correspond with the diagram? Illustration 7. Place edge springs on the last needles. Illustration 8. The settings on both locks are the same as for the 1x1 one one cast on. Both NX levers, back and front, are in the end position. Turn both stitch size regulators to one and a half. Insert orange strippers at the right and left of the lock. Always use orange strippers for double bed knitting. Illustration 8 shows a representation of the orange strippers at the right and the racking handle at the left. The handle must be in the down position. Next, we want to place the feeding eyelet with the threaded yarn into the lock. Therefore, pull the lever of the color changer twice to the right. Both feeding eyelets are now up. Press the eyelet that you want to use first down. Pull the lever of the color changer once to the right and press down the second eyelet. Move the lock to the right until it operates the lever of the color changer. Then, the desired eyelet is brought into the jaws of the lock. Slowly move the lock from right to left.
Compare with illustration 9. The yarn forms an irregular zigzag across the needle beds. Adjust both locks according to diagram 10. Turn the pattern selector dials to C and NX levers to X and stitch size regulators to 4. Move the lock from left to right and then from right to left. Illustration 11. With the racking handle, make a full turn clockwise, which means to the right. Compare with the needle diagram in illustration 12. This is the correct and final position for a 2x2 two two rib. Adjust both locks according to illustration 12. Both NX levers to the end position, and stitch size regulators to 4 and a half. Knit one row. Now, the lock is at the right, and the cast on for a 2x2 two two rib is completed. Return the row counter to 0. Illustration 12. Knit 16 rows in a 2x2 two two rib. The rib is finished, and you'll want to transfer the stitches to the front bed for stocking stitch. With the racking handle, make a half a turn counterclockwise, which means to the left. Compare the position of needles with illustration 13. With a double decker tool, Transfer the last stitch at the right from the back to the front bed onto the corresponding empty needle on the front bed. Proceed with the adjacent stitch on the back bed, transferring it to the corresponding needle on the front bed. There will be two stitches on the same needle. Now, there are two stitches on the second needle at the right on the front bed. When you knit the first row in stocking stitch, these two stitches will be knitted into one stitch. Continue to transfer all stitches from the back to the front in the same way. Push all empty needles on the back bed in the resting position and the handle into the down position. Illustration 14. Set the back lock to GX, which guarantees free movement of the lock. Now, the needles on the back bed will not knit at all. Set the stitch size of the front lock to 6 and a half. Replace the orange strippers with the black strippers. Return the row counter to 0. Knit 70 rows in stocking stitch. At this point, we start decreasing for the armhole shaping. Return the row counter to zero. Have a look at the diagram in illustration 15. There, you can see minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1 stitch every alternate row. First, we will decrease 3 stitches at the right. Knit 1 row and decrease 3 stitches at the left. Knit 1 row and decrease 2 stitches at the right. Knit another row and decrease 2 stitches at the left. Knit 1 row and decrease 1 stitch at the right. Knit a final row and decrease 1 stitch at the left. This finishes the armhole shaping. There should be 68 stitches left on the machine, and the row counter should read 5. If all is correct, continue to knit in stocking stitch until the row counter reads 36. This is where we start the shoulder shaping. Return the row counter to 0. This particular shoulder shaping method is different from the one used for the previous test piece. 
We will make graduations instead of decreasing stitches. With the help of the pushers, we have the possibility to keep the corresponding needles out of work. In the end, you will cast off all the stitches in one row after finishing the graduations. Graduations, or short rows, are always worked with pushers. Illustration 16, open the blocking rail by pulling the blocking rail button at the left. Keep it there. With the other hand, bring the same number of pushers into the working position as the number of working needles. Make sure the blocking rail is closed properly and no pusher gets caught. Illustration 17. If pushers are not in the correct position, the blocking rail won't close properly. Pushers are easily taken out of the needle bed, so it might happen that a pusher may protrude from the needle bed, which also prevents the blocking rail from closing properly. If you don't succeed in closing the blocking rail even if every pusher is in its proper position, press all pushers into the needle bed, and the blocking rail will snap easily. Illustration 18. The pushers must be in a straight line, touching the needle feet. Illustration 19. Turn the pattern selector dial of the front lock to B and the NX lever to the X position. With the lock setting BX, all needles with the corresponding pushers will knit normally. If you want to keep a needle from knitting, push the corresponding pusher down until it touches the blocking rail. This is the rest position of the pusher. The stitch stays on the needle, but it will not be knitted when the lock moves across the needles. This is what we are going to do when shaping the shoulder with graduations, i.e., moving pushers back into the rest position. Return pushers into the rest position on the opposite side of the lock when the lock is at the right, return pushers at the left-hand side of your knitting to the rest position. We call this the opposite side of the lock. Illustration 20, return 5 pushers at the left into the rest position. Knit 1 row. The lock is at the left. Now, push 5 pushers at the right into the rest position. Knit 1 row. Continue to return pushers to the rest position in the same way. One more time, return 5 pushers on each side, then return 6 pushers on each side until the row counter reads 7. The lock is now at the left side of the knitting. Return the last 6 pushers into the rest position. There are 24 pushers left in the working position. Knit another row. You have completed shoulder shaping with graduations and can now cast off all remaining stitches in a single operation. Break the knitting yarn and secure the loose end with the yarn clip at the right of your knitter. Then, it will stay threaded and ready for the next piece of knitting. Prepare an approximate 2 yard strand for casting off. Cast off all stitches. Return all needles and pushers to the rest position. You have now knitted the back of your sweater, and you have learned the technique of short rowing or graduations, which is another way of decreasing stitches. In the future, it is up to you to choose which method you prefer or find easier. Please note that decreasing with graduations is only possible if you decrease at least one stitch every row. With the successfully knitted back part in mind, let's move on to the front part of the sweater. Carefully study the diagram in illustration 21. For the first time, you'll see a diagram identical to the ones in our pattern and model books. To save space and time, we only show half of the diagram. If the knitting is symmetrical, the broken line at the left symbolizes the center of the knitting. The horizontal lines end with an arrow at the left to show that the left half is exactly the same size as the right half. The horizontal measurements, such as 80 stitches for the rib, refer to the entire width of the diagram. 
Remember that you cast on over a width of 80 needles when knitting the back. The same cast on will be repeated for the front. On each bed, push 80 needles into the working position. Begin with the first needle at the right and return every third needle into the rest position. Compare with illustration 22. The needles of your knitter must be in the same position as shown on the needle diagram. Illustration 23. Knit one row with both locks set on N and stitch size one and a half. Do not forget to put orange strippers in the lock. Illustration 24. Set both locks and front lock to CX and stitch size to four. Knit two rows. Illustration 25. Turn the racking handle one full turn to the right. Set both locks to N and stitch size to 4. Knit one row. This completes the cast on. Return the row counter to 0, then knit 16 rows. The rib is completed. Transfer all stitches to the front bed. First, turn the racking handle a half turn to the left. On the back bed, push all needles down and set the back lock to GX. Illustration 26. Set the front lock to N, stitch size to 6.5, and, and use the black strippers. Return the row counter to zero and continue to knit according to the diagram. Knit 62 rows straight in stocking stitch. Here, you have to divide the work for the v-neck shaping. Again, we shall use a different method than with the first sweater. We shall use decker combs for dividing the knitting. If there are no decker combs in your accessories, you can buy them separately. Of course, you can divide the knitting with the pushers as you did for your first test piece. If dividing the work with the decker combs, get them ready now as follows. Illustration 27. Remove cover from one decker comb. Illustration 28. Insert the 20 eyelets of the decker comb into the 20 needle heads from left to center. Take care to get hold of every single needle head. Pull needles upwards until the stitches are behind the open latches. It's helpful to pull the knitting down with your left hand when transferring the stitches onto the decker comb. Illustration 29. Push the needles and the decker comb downwards until the stitches slip over the closed latches onto the decker comb. Unhook the decker comb and immediately replace the cover to avoid stitches from dropping. Rest this decker comb on top of both needle beds. Place the next 20 stitches onto another decker comb, proceeding exactly as before. Then, carefully drop both closed decker combs between the needle beds. Push all empty needles at the left of the center down and therefore out of work. Return the row counter to zero. Your knitting is divided now, and you can knit the right half. This method of dividing the knitting has advantages. It takes better care of the knitting yarn because you do not always move across the stitches at the left when knitting the right half. A new kind of decreasing is now introduced to you for the neck shaping. We shall decrease with a triple dagger tool. With this method, you don't decrease at the very edge of the knitting but decrease the fourth stitch from the right or left of your knitting. It's also called raglan shaping because this is the sort of decreasing used for raglan shaping. Another name for it is full fashion. Illustration 30. Now, get the triple decker tool ready.
Illustration 31. Hook eyelets of the triple dagger tool into the last three needle heads at the left of your knitting. Pull needles up until the stitches slip behind the open latch of the needles. Illustration 32. With the triple decker tool, push needles down in the direction of the needles until the stitches have slipped onto the tool. Unhook the triple decker tool by tilting it backwards, lift it, and move it one needle in. Hook the triple decker tool on these needle heads. Illustration 33. Let the stitches glide onto these needles, pulling the knitting with your left hand from below and tilting the triple decker tool forward. Now, the first needle at left is empty, and on the fourth needle counting from the left, there are two stitches. Put the empty needle out of work. Knit four rows, then decrease one more stitch in the same way on the left. Knit another four rows. Return the row counter to zero. At this point, you start decreasing for the armhole shaping. As you continue to shape the neckline. For the neckline, you'll have to decrease every fourth row. For the armhole shaping, you'll decrease every alternate row. If asymmetrical shaping appears a little confusing to you, do not hesitate to keep a list as shown in illustration 34. Reach for a pen, and then we'll fill in the list together. In the center column, for the row counter, write down the rows with decreasing on the right, the left, or on either side with decreasing in every alternate row. For the armhole, you'll have to write the numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, and so forth. In the right column, you note the number of stitches to be decreased at the right side of your knitting. Next to 0, you'll therefore write minus 3. These are the stitches you are going to decrease when starting the armhole shaping. Next to 2, you'll write minus 2. Next to 4, you'll write minus 1. That's all concerning the right edge. In the left column, write next to the numbers 0, 4, 8, 12, etc., minus 1. If you like, you may complete the list up to row 36 for the 10th decrease at left. This kind of list comes in very handy when there are even greater differences between the right and left edges of knitting. It enables you, by a mere look at the row counter, to easily decrease or increase at either side and tells you what to do next. Continue to knit according to your list. At left, continue decreasing with the triple decker tool. At right, decrease as usual. When the row counter reads 36, listen again to the tape. Return the row counter to zero and start shoulder shaping at the right by casting off five stitches. In the same row, decrease the last stitch for the neckline with a triple decker tool. Work shoulder shaping according to the diagram. For the second half, put stitches on decker combs back onto needles of the machine. Push 40 needles into the working position and make sure all latches are open. Bring up both decker combs that are hanging between the needle beds and put them on top of the needle beds with the knitting still between both beds. To facilitate all this, we advise you to lower the front bed first. Illustration 35 the knob for lowering the front bed, you'll find under the right front side plate. To lower the front bed, pull this knob to the right. After having lifted up the decker combs, push the front bed back into its normal position with your left hand. Push the front bed up, and with your right hand, push the knob to the left simultaneously. Make sure the stitches are at the bottom of the decker comb before removing the cover. Place the eyelets of the decker comb into the needle heads. Again, take care to get hold of every needle head. 
Then, tilt the decker comb forward, at the same time pulling the knitting down between the beds. Illustration 36 In the same way, transfer stitches on the other decker comb onto the needles of your knitter. Return the row counter to zero. Knit one row. The lock is now on the left, and you can knit this part in the same way as the first one, but with reversed shapings. Use the same list as before with a small alteration. In the center column, having already knitted one row, it should read 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. instead of 0, 2, 4, etc. While knitting this front and back part, you got to know the various new knitting methods. When knitting the sleeve, you'll see that you are already familiar with all the techniques. It will be an excellent possibility to get to know your machine a little better. The more you knit, the easier the handling of the machine. Knit the sleeves according to the diagram in illustration 37. Make a 2x2 two two rib cast on. If necessary, check with illustrations 8 to 11. Finish both sleeves. To finish the sweater, you proceed as in cassette 2. Pin all parts out to size and press lightly. Then join shoulder seams and measure the neck edge. Calculate the correct number of stitches by stretching the 2x2 two two ribs sideways and compare it with the neckband measurements. We suggest you knit only 8 rows in 2x2 two two rib for this type of neckband. Attach this neckband to the neck edge with short edges at the center front, as illustrated in illustration 38. Use the mattress stitch to sew the center front seam in the neckband forming a neat point and folding surplus edges of the neckband back on the inside. For sewing up, there are useful tips and hints in the instruction book. Please press the fast forward key on your recorder to the end of the tape and then turn over. So far, you have acquired a sound knowledge about the shaping of knitted garments. We would now like to show you various stitch patterns. The following test piece can be sewn up in the end and will turn into a pair of handy slippers. Illustration 39, for this test piece, you'll need the same type of yarn as for the first sweater. Take two balls in different colors and thread both colors. If you have not yet memorized threading, please do not hesitate to consult your instruction book for detailed information with illustrations. Push 75 needles on either bed into the working position. We'll start with a closed tubular cast on. Place the orange strippers in the lock. Illustration 40 shows you the needle diagram with various abbreviations, such as the needle diagram itself, the strippers, the handle position, the lock settings, the stitch size, and a new abbreviation COL1. COL stands for color, and it's used throughout all patterns and model books. Look at the slipper, you are going to knit in illustration 39. COL1 is the brighter color, and COL2 is the darker one. It's entirely up to you to choose your COL1 and bring the corresponding feeding eyelet in the lock. Set both locks back and front to N and stitch size 2. Knit one row. Illustration 41. Set both locks back and front to CX. Change stitch size front and back to 6. Knit two rows. Illustration 42. Replace orange strippers with black ones. Knit one row. Return row counter to zero because the closed tubular cast on is finished. Continue to knit tubular until the row counter reads 16. 
If you lower the front bed, you can easily see the tubular knitting with a closed cast on. To lower the front bed, just pull the knob at the right underneath the side plate of the front bed. Bring the front bed into its normal position, push it up with your left hand, and push the knob with your right hand to the left simultaneously. Illustration 43. Set lock at front and back to N. Change stitch size to 3 and 3 quarters. Knit one row. Insert orange strippers. Knit one row. Now we'll continue to knit in fisherman's rib. Therefore, we set the front and back lock to EX, as shown in illustration 44. Return row counter to zero, and then knit until it reads 16. By now, you must have noticed that doing fisherman's rib is just as easy and automatic as knitting stocking stitch. Next, we're going to knit a fully automatic loop pattern. The diagram that sticks on top of the back lock tells you that the loop patterns are knitted with the lock setting AX, and you always need the pushers to knit this type of pattern. Loop patterns are also called tuck. On the front bed, move 75 pushers out of the blocking rail. Push the button of the blocking rail to the right, hold it there, and move the pushers up. Finally, release the button. Arrange these pushers in a straight line with pusher feet touching the blocking rail. This is the so-called rest position. Illustration 45, set the back lock to end position. Illustration 46, at the lower edge of the front lock, you will see three white buttons. Just above these buttons, you will see two arrows, one pointing to the right and the other pointing to the left with an O in between them. These are the so-called arrow keys. Press the left arrow key until it clicks into place. This is the key with the arrow pointing to the left. When studying the information for the lock setting, you will see an arrow pointing in the corresponding direction. This arrow is the symbol for the arrow key. With these arrow keys, you can alter the pusher position, i.e., pushers in the rest position will move into the working position, and pushers in the working position will move into the rest position. This happens when moving the lock in the direction of the pressed arrow key. First, return the row counter to zero. Then move the lock to the far right until it operates the lever of the color changer, thus interchanging the feeding eyelets. Knit one row with COL2. Now, look at the pushers. They are all in the working position. Continue to knit until the row counter reads 14. Illustration 47. To try a different tuck pattern, we'll change the position of the pushers. Arrange pushers in a one-by-one one order, alternating one pusher in the working position, one pusher in the rest position, and so forth. The lock setting remains the same. Return row counter to zero. Knit one row. This is the moment when you can actually see what's happening when knitting with the lock set to AX. Every needle with a corresponding pusher in the working position knitted normally. The other needles with the corresponding pushers in the rest position didn't knit, but a thread is placed in each needle head together with the stitch of the previous row. This thread is called a tuck. With the lock setting AX, such tucks or loops are formed whenever the corresponding pushers are in the rest position. Needles with pushers in the working position will knit normally. Continue to knit until the row counter reads 14. Press the zero key to release the arrow key. Next, we're going to knit a tuck. Several tucks often make a very smart decoration for all sorts of knits. But for our slipper, 
will knit only one tuck row by pulling a cord through when making up. Illustration 48, set the back lock to GX, front lock to N. GX is the correct setting for free movement of the lock, as you can see on the diagram on top of the back lock. When the lock is set to GX, you can move the lock across the needles without knitting or dropping the stitches. In fact, the stitches will just stay on the needles. With the present lock setting, therefore, the needles on the back bed will not knit at all. The front bed needles are going to knit normally. Insert black strippers and change stitch size on the front lock to 6. Return row counter to 0. Change to COL1 and knit 8 rows. Illustration 49. To finish off and join the tuck, set both locks to N and stitch size to 3 and 3 quarters. Insert orange strippers and knit 2 rows. Illustration 50. Now we would like to show you how to knit double bed ferrule patterns. Therefore, set front lock to BX and then press the left arrow key. Ferrule patterns are always knitted with pushers. So now you have to arrange the pushers for the ferrule pattern. Starting at the right, push the first three pushers into the rest position. Then bring four groups of three pushers into the working position with one pusher in the rest position between each group of three. Start again with three pushers in the rest position, and so on. Return row counter to zero and knit two rows with COL1, two rows with COL2, and so on, alternating both colors until the row counter reads 12. Knit the following six rows with color one. Then change color and knit two rows with COL2. From now on, continue to change colors every alternate row until the row counter reads 26. Knit another two rows with COL2. For the first time, we'll cast off a double bed knit. Set the back and front lock to the end position. Depress the arrow key by pressing the center key until the left arrow key releases. Then knit two rows with COL1. Now transfer all stitches from the back bed to the front bed onto the corresponding needles. Use the double decker tool for transferring as you learned earlier. Leave the empty needles on the back bed in the working position and change the stitch size on the back lock to 5. Insert black strippers and knit one row. Lower the front bed and push the knitting back in order to pull the stitches on the front bed, making them larger. Illustration 51 Get the tool ready with the latch hook on one end and two plain eyelets on the other end. Illustration 52. Insert the open latch hook into the first stitch from the top, starting at the right. Illustration 53. Pull this stitch slightly to the left and insert the tool from the top into the second stitch. Now push this latch hook down until the first stitch has slipped behind the latch. Take great care that the second stitch does not slip behind the latch. Illustration 54. Here, pull the tool back up until the first stitch closes the latch of the needle tool and then slips over the second stitch. The second stitch remains caught in the head of the latch needle tool. Continue crocheting to the last stitch thus forming a perfect double bed cast off. Break the yarn and pull it through the last stitch. Take the knitting off the machine by pushing the needles of the back bed up first and then back into the rest position so that all the stitches drop off the needles. 
To do this, it might be necessary to pull the knitting from below the needle beds. Afterwards, do exactly the same with the needles of the front bed. Now we want to have a close look at your knitted piece of art. You'll notice the ferrule pattern very nicely on the same side of the knitting as the tuck is seen. This is the side that is facing you when knitting. Whereas the AX patterns show more clearly and by far more attractive on the other side of the knitting. Tuck patterns give a much wider knit than ferrule patterns. The test piece just completed shows you exactly what we mean. If you would like, you can stitch up this test piece into a lovely slipper. Just join the cast on and the side seam up to the tuck. The ferrule part can be folded down like a collar. Finally, pull a knitted cord through the tuck. This cord can be knitted too. Illustration 55. For knitting the cord, bring two needles on the back and three needles on the front bed into the working position. Set back and front lock to the end position, stitch size 3, and insert black strippers. Knit one row. Turn the pattern selector dial on both locks to C and the NX lever to X. Change stitch size to 4 and knit 2 rows. Change stitch size to 6 and knit the cord as long as you need it. To finish off, break the yarn and pull it through the open loops. Pull the cord through the tuck of your test piece. You may even sew tassels on each end of the cord if desired. Having successfully finished this slipper, we are convinced that you would like to attempt to knit a second slipper to make a pair. This should be no problem. You can either rewind the tape and start it all over again, or you can go ahead and follow the illustrations. This time, pay special attention to the use of the strippers. We always tell you when the black or the orange strippers are used. Just a general word about using the strippers, when knitting a double bed pattern, orange strippers are used. For single bed knitting, the black strippers are necessary. Maybe you think you've knitted the whole test piece on both beds, but this is not quite correct. When you started tubular knitting, you didn't knit on both beds simultaneously. When moving the lock from right to left, you knitted on the front bed only, and when moving it from left to right, only the back bed needles were knitting. That explains why black strippers are used for tubular knitting. The same applies to knitting tucks. The tuck was knitted only on the front bed, and therefore, the black strippers were used. We believe that you have learned a good deal about your knitting machine, and no doubt you have gained valuable experience operating it. In other words, you are well equipped for knitting independently, and who knows, maybe you will knit a model from our model books. Thank you for watching. May your projects be filled with creativity and joy. Happy knitting! Check the description to find the links to the other audio cassettes. Have a nice day and see you next time!